Good morning, Facebook Live. This is Robin Carrigato. Welcome to a day, a Feast of Tabernacles, Sukkot, the time of the Feast of Booths. So as you join in, be super hopeful and expectant. God wants me to go into one of my absolutely favorite scriptures, and I unpack the entire chapter in God's Firewall Healing of the Soul series in relation to Nehemiah 8. And so God wants me to read Nehemiah 8. He wants me to encourage you. Listen, there is so much warfare. There has been warfare since the Feast of Trumpets, just like in the spring feast, in the time of Passover, leading up to Pentecost. I'm telling you, there was massive warfare. You really have to guard your heart and your mind because the enemy is just really coming against God's people because greater is Jesus in us than he that is in the world. And at the effectual door are many adversaries. Good morning, Rebecca, Katie, Kimberly, Sue, Layla, Stacy. God bless y'all. Wow, we've got a great crowd today. So happy Sukkot, Feast of Booths, Feast of Tabernacles. Now, as we're getting into today's message, Oh my goodness, I feel the anointing already. I've got chill bumps already on my arms. I don't know if you can see them, but I've got chill bumps. The anointing just came all over me. And it's not because of me. It is because God knows your need. And the anointing never approves the person. The anointing is for the needs of the people. Amen. And so the fruits of righteousness that people present are what shows who is our teacher, and Holy Spirit is our teacher. Amen. So, Nehemiah 8, before this time, they have had so much warfare. Rebuilding the wall, a sword in one hand, building with the other hand, fightings within, fe fightings without, and fears within. If that is what you've been going through, and let me get that scripture as well. Fightings without, and fears within. And that scripture is 2 Corinthians 7, 5. Fightings without and fears within. That's what Nehemiah and the Israelites were enduring while building the wall of the holy city. And this is Nehemiah 8 that I'm getting to. And so it is the time of the Feast of Tabernacles. Ezra has come back. Daniel is with them. They have all the holy vessels that had been stolen out of God's house when Israel was taken to Babylon, and now they've brought them back. And so Ezra, the prophet who wrote the book of Ezra, is standing in front of the water gate at the broad place, and he's reading the holy scriptures to Israel, and it's going to describe the time of the Feast of Tabernacles. And you're going to see that they had so much understanding. <laughs> Help me, Lord. When do you get understanding? When you've been in battle. When you've had the adversary breathing down your neck. When you have just a little strength and you go low. Oh, my goodness. Then you understand your God. Woo! Hallelujah. And so this is Nehemiah 8. And you're going to see the people have so much understanding. And what I actually do in this particular session of God's Firewall Healing of the Soul, and I think that is session 18, session 19 that I do, is I use carbon copy paper as an analogy in that healing of the soul. And eventually, they'll all get out on Amazon as a book. There's 24 workbooks. Only three of the workbooks have been transposed into physical books. But eventually, and so carbon copy paper. And so those of y'all who are from my age group who took typing class when you were freshmen or maybe an eighth grader, we had carbon copy paper where we had the original that we would type on, that ink paper that would have a back sheet in which it would press onto. And so I use that analogy. Imagine in the spirit realm, that there is this huge carbon copy paper while the book of the word of Holy Scriptures is being read by the prophet and it's being inscribed. 
It's being printed on the hearers of that word. And where, where do we see this in the New Testament? 1 Corinthians 2, Paul says, I choose to know nothing except for Christ Jesus and Him crucified. And when I came amongst you, I came in fear and in trembling. And I did not come with persuasive words, eloquent words, but I came in a demonstration of the Holy Spirit and power that stirred up holy emotions in the hearers of that word. That is the carbon copy. That is what's going on in Nehemiah 8 at the time of Feast of Tabernacles. Nehemiah 8 verse 1. Then all the people gathered together as one man in the broad place at the water gate. That out of our belly and out of our heart shall flow rivers of living water. And they asked Ezra the scribe to bring the book of the law of Moses which the Lord had given to Israel. And as for the priests brought the law before the assembly of both men and women and all who could hear with understanding on the first of the seventh month. Now this is the Feast of Trumpets, but eventually it's going to get into the Feast of Tabernacles. So that's the first of the seventh month, which is Yom Teruah, the Feast of Trumpets. He read from it, facing the broad place before the water gate from early morning until noon in the presence of the men and women those who could understand, and all the people were attentive to the book of the law. Ezra the scribe stood on a wooden pulpit, which they had made for the purpose. And beside him stood all these names. I'm not going to read them right now. Let's go to verse 5. Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, for he was standing above them. And when he opened it, all the people stood up. Ezra opened the book, uh, and Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God. And all the people answered, Amen, Amen, lifting up their hands. And they bowed their heads and worshiped the Lord with faces to the ground. Also, all these other names, verse 7. Now let's go to verse 8. So they read from the book of the law of God distinctly, faithfully, amplifying, and giving the sense so that people understood the reading. And Nehemiah, who was the governor, and Ezra the priest and scribe, and the Levites who taught the people said to all of them, This day is holy to the Lord God. Mourn not, nor weep, for the people wept when they heard the words of the law. Feast of Trumpets, seventh month, first day. They're having so much understanding. They are undone. They are just weeping. And I don't know exactly what Ezra was reading, but I... No, he was reading from the Torah, the first five books. Most likely, he was reading about the feast, most likely. And so, now let's go to verse 11. So, the Le Levites quieted all the people, saying, Be still, for the day is holy. Be not grieved and sad. And all the people went their way to eat, drink, send portions, make great rejoicing, for they had understood the words that were declared to them. On the second day, all the heads of the father's houses with the priests Levites gathered to Ezra the scribe to study and understand the words of divine instruction, and they found written in the law which the Lord had commanded through Moses that the Israelites should dwell in booze, and this is Sukkot, so now he's describing the Feast of Tabernacles, during the Feast of the Seventh Month, and this feast is what we're in right now, and they that should publish and proclaim in all their towns in Jerusalem, saying, Go out to the hills and bring branches of olive, wild olive, myrtle, palm, and other leafy trees to make booze, as it is written. So understand, the people have been through warfare, building the wall. And now they're hearing another feast. And it is the Feast of Booze. Now, saints, if you have been in warfare, you can totally relate to the people, the Israelites in Nehemiah's time, and how that understanding brought the word of truth and power to their being that they were forever changed. That is what is happening right now. Verse 16. So the people went out and brought them and made themselves booze, each one, each on the roof of his house, and in their courts, in the courts of God's house, and in the squares of the water gate and the gate of Ephraim. And Ephraim means double fruit. Hey, Amy. Hey, Donna. Hey, Barbara. God bless. Thank you. for And Liz. God bless. And so I'm reading the Feast of Tabernacles instruction to Israel in Nehemiah 8 at the very end after I've already read about the Feast of Trumpets and the warfare that Israel had gone through in building 
rebuilding the wall. And as Holy Spirit is going to strengthen you today, understand that the warfare is real. Good morning, Mary. But understand that God in us is greater. What's interesting, there were pomegranates this morning at the store when we went. Hey, Barbara, when we went this morning, there were pomegranates there. And I just cannot help but think about the pomegranate being a demonstration of Jesus Christ and the bride. And I taught on it in Isaiah 35, 8 track, year 3 of God's Firewall School of the Prophets. It was based on the Highway of Holiness, chapters 60 through 66 of Isaiah, and then Isaiah 11, and then Psalm 119. Those were the particular sessions, nine sessions, that God had for year 3. And in those sessions, God had me teach the feast. And I'll never forget learning about how to cut a pomegranate and open it up. Yes, Amy. And so at the top of the pomegranate is a flower. And I know I've done this several times, but I got to just do it. Holy Spirit wants me to do it. So it can just be an image. Actually, this image is so pretty. So the top of the pomegranate is a flower. Let's see if this comes up. Yeah. So this top right here, let me bring it. That's the flower. And you cut around the flower and you get the flower off. And then you get a knife and you score the ridges. There are ridges that open up. And this light is usually on me. Let me get this light back on me. And you score the ridges and open it up. And then inside of it are all of these beautiful seeds that have flesh and juice. And there are 613 in every single pomegranate because there are 613, 613 commands of God in his word. And this is what God showed me because those ridges of the pomegranate are called the ribs. Woo! When you go so deep and you commune because each seed is like taking communion. If you don't have communion with you and you have a pomegranate, you can open the pomegranate. And that's how God showed me in 2 Timothy 2, Paul saying about dividing the word accurately so that it can be taught because th that's how understanding comes. Understanding comes by hearing the word, the word of truth taught by Holy Spirit. And so imagine if someone just got a knife and started hacking into that pomegranate, all of those seeds would just be all mangled and looking horrible. But if you take just a pomegranate, amen, Amy, me too. If you take a pomegranate and you just get one seed, the outside of the seed is called the flesh. The flesh. The inside of the seed is the drink. And I'm telling you, do not go out if you get a pomegranate on your shirt because if you get pulled over, they will ask you if you have done something to some person because it literally looks like blood. And once you get that on your shirt, it is not coming out. It is staining you. Woo! Stained by the blood. Amen. It is, Katie. And so when you take that one seed, you're taking communion. 613 seeds in every pomegranate. Think about that. And so as Israel is hearing about the commands of the Lord, the, this is one of the 613 commands. And each command comes with a blessing. And so as we keep, as we acknowledge the Feast of Sukkot, the Feast of Booths, the Feast of Tabernacles, it is a command of God that God is blessing us. I'm telling you, he is blessing us. And it's like we're taking those seeds and we're saying, yes, Lord, I receive you. Hey, Fred, I love you. And I, and I commune with you on this day. Now, how you celebrate Sukkot, that is entirely up to you. A lot of people celebrate it like they do Rosh Hashanah, Feast of Trumpets. 
and they celebrate it very similarly. There's the baking of cakes and apples and all kinds of foods and dispersions and the setting up of booths and just the celebration and the delight in knowing that God forever has made a seventh day rest on this earth for us of Hebrews 4 and that there is an eternal rest that is reflected in that Hebrews 4 seventh day rest. So let me in Nehemiah 8 as I'm ending about the Feast of Booth. So let's go back to chapter verse 16, Nehemiah 8. So the people went out and brought them and made themselves booths, each on the roof of his house and in their courts and the courts of God's house and in the square of the water gate and the gate of Ephraim. Why is this so important? Listen, the people are standing in the broad place. They've been in the tight place. And like the Psalmist David says, I've been in the narrow place. Bring me to a broad place. I've been pressed in on every side. There's fightings without and fears within. God, do something. That's what's going on. Now they're at the water gate of Jerusalem in front of the broad place. Here is Ezra on a podium high up. He is reading about the feast. The first day he read about the Feast of Trumpets, and he's continually reading about the feast. And now he's reading about the Feast of Tabernacles, the Feast of Booths, Sukkot. And so all the people are keeping those commands. Even while you are gathered here today, you chose to gather here today. He is bringing such a blessing on you. Praise God, Debbie. Thank you. While we're gathered here today, y'all, we're listening to the Sukkot. We're listening to the reading of God's words and keeping those commands that Ezra is reflecting in Nehemiah 8. And God is blessing us, saints. So let me read verse 16. And Ephraim is double fruit. So think about double blessing. There's no blessing without a testing. So this is a double blessing. Let me read verse 16 again. So the people went out and brought them and made themselves booths, each one on the roof of his house and in their courts and the courts of God's house and in the squares of the water gate and the gate of Ephraim. All the assembly of returned exiles made booths and dwelt in them for since the day of Joshua, son of Nun. Joshua is basically salvation is in Jehovah. Yahushua, salvation is in Jehovah and is a prototype, a foreshadowing of Jesus Christ, son of Nun, N-U-N. This is from Joshua 1.1 1, 1, that is being reflected in verse 17 and 17 means consecration. So Nehemiah 8, new beginnings, eternal, infinite, 8, and 17, consecration. So, Nehemiah eight seventeen, All the assembly of returned exiled made booze and dwelt in them. For since the days of Joshua, son of Nun, N-U-N means perpetuity, eternity. Yahashua. Since the days of Yahashua, salvation is in Jehovah, Jesus, of eternity. That is what this is saying. What? Up to that day, the Israelites had not done so, and there was great rejoicing. Also day by day, from the first day to the last, this is the seven days in the feast. Ezra read from the book of the law of God, and they kept the feast for seven days. The eighth day, which is the closing, the day of assembly, according to the ordinance, that is the most holy day. Y'all, when we get to October the 6th, we're just going to keep leading up to that time. Acknowledge God. Acknowledge this feast. Read Hebrews 4. Read the law of Moses about the feast. And read Nehemiah 8. And read it to your children. And tell them the story. And be blessed. God bless you. I love you. Have an amazing Sukkot. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.